the Mate 20 Pro is now over two years old, but how's it aged? Well, we're gonna find out together. Let's first address a few things because Huawei is effectively barred from selling smartphones with Google mobile services being installed. This is, means that this is the last Mate series device with official access to the Google Play Store. It puts it in a unique position as it's the only Mate worth picking up in the West unless you are happy to sideload the Play Store using something like Google Fire. But before we go any further and while I have your attention, be sure to hit subscribe for more long-term looks at hardware like the Mate 20 Pro and more on top. And if you do want to take the conversation even further still, be sure to join the official channel Discord where you'll find all sorts of snippets, info and more on top. Go on, you know you want to. So to be honest, the Mate 20 Pro has aged so much better than I ever thought it would have done. If I'm honest, I think the P30 Pro was the first Huawei device I actively loved, but the Mate 20 Pro was a complete and utter beast at launch. And I still think even by 2020 standards, it really is. Yes, there are a few things that we do need to go over though, before we come to our verdict. Make no mistake, this is still really a gorgeous phone. I think it's the best looking Huawei phone to date, save the Mate 40 Pro, closely followed by the P30 Pro, but wow, has it aged better than I would have thought it would. At the back, the textured finish is great if you don't like a case, and it reminds me a bit of a vinyl record, but that is only available on the blue and green colors. I can't actually see any major damage to the rear panel, and I like the tactile grip it gives you at the back without having to wear a case. You can tell that Huawei took more than just a few design cues from the Galaxy S9, which is still a gorgeous phone in its own right, but there are a few neat little tweaks that I think have aged really well. And I personally don't get the hate for curved displays. Yes, I do like a flat display from usability, but a curved display does look much nicer for sure, save those issues with phantom touches. My Mate 20 Pro hasn't suffered from the horrendous green tint that I saw reported early in its life phase online, it has a few gashes and dings, but overall I think it's survived without really needing a case. But for full transparency, I went a long time without using the Mate 20 Pro once the P30 Pro was released. The 6.39 inch QHD Plus display is so clean and crisp. You've got some small bezels to contend with and the 100% iPhone copycat 3D face unlock notch too. I think that isn't too bad. I can deal with it, but I'm glad we're getting more towards punch or notches on phones now because it's still a big portion of the display to lose when watching videos and whatnot in landscape mode. Plus the notification bar does feel a little less cramped than it does on this phone. The Mate 20 Pro released just before high refresh rates were more commonplace, but I think it's still really solid and mainly because of that high resolution. I'm still running on EMUI 9.1 though on my Mate 20 Pro. I've not actually been able to pull the EMUI 10 update for some reason. It just seems to fail when I try to do so. I think this is because this is technically a review unit so it doesn't get updates in the same way, but then I'm not really sure on top of that, so I'll try and find out and get back to you in the comments section. Although being on an older software version, I actually really love that the usage of gestures here, which Huawei added ahead of Android 10, although on-screen buttons are still nice if you do want to use them. EMUI 9 is a massive Marmite skin though, so for those that don't get the reference, it's a love or hate scenario. It's the little touches where EMUI 9 and even EMUI 10 and 11 which I've used quite an extensive bit, still feel a little bit heavy handed. Things like the notification shade not being able to double tap the power button to launch the camera app. I get it, some people like the UI changes. It's just one of the reasons people choose one phone over another. But for me, it's the little inconsistencies that ruin third party skins most of the time. Android Pie though is still really fast and runs smoothly with the Kirin 980 chip. And I'm sure that Android 10 will do too. This chipset is a beast and I was worried though about that six gigabytes of RAM. This might not be great in the long term, but there isn't anything I can't run more or less flawlessly on this phone. I'm not much of a mobile gamer either, but I know the Kirin chipsets can be a little less GPU capable, but then again, you should be able to run most 3D titles without much of a problem. Yeah, there might be the odd creak and drop frame here and there, but for the most part, it's absolutely fine. I said it during my OnePlus 6T retrospective, which you'll find a card to in the upper right, and I'll say it again now, I think we've already reached a point where smartphone performance is good enough for most people out there, more or less a while back. The Kirin 980 on the Mate 20 Pro sort of proves that yet again, that we've reached this apex point where most smartphone chipsets are pretty good for everyday tasks. Now another area it proves to still be just as impressive as the camera, 
which was actually my first proper in-depth introduction to a Huawei camera setup. I love the square bump at the back, it's like a series of burner rings on an oven and it's pretty iconic now by design terms. Of course this is the last flagship before the amazing RYYB sensor came to Huawei devices, it's still pretty good and it, but it is far from perfect. If you want the best images possible then I would suggest disabling the master AI which actively bumps colours and sharpness throughout a scene. It can go too far at times but overall I still think it gives things a unique look more so than other camera systems. Turn it off though and things are a little flatter and you can do some more experimentation after you've taken a shot. You've got a wealth of lenses at your fingertips and a really solid night mode that still hangs in there with the best, but it can't match the single exposure prowess of the RYYB sensors in newer Huawei handsets. It was an exceptional camera setup when it hit the market, so it, like I said, just hangs in there and still produces some great photos, even in low light. It is a two year old phone so the battery isn't as good as it once was but it's a big old 4200 milliamp hour battery inside. It should be enough to get you through a full day, maybe more, but for me at one point this was a two day phone, now not so much, it's mainly taking me to the end of the day where I have to look for the charger. That said super fast charging is brilliant and you've got wireless charging and reverse wireless charging if you want to top up some accessories like a pair of earbuds or even a friend's phone for instance. So let's take into account the fact that you can get the Mate 20 Pro in good condition for less than half the price of a brand new Pixel 4a and I think it makes it feel a bit like a steal with everything that's on offer here. But with Huawei still barred from accessing Google services going forward, I'm not really sure it's wise unless you're happy running out of day software. I'm not saying the Mate 20 Pro has aged badly or anything like that, I still think it's a pretty superb smartphone. It was more or less the complete package when it launched and it's just as good now two years later but it's less than £200 now, so it pretty much feels like a steal. So that's it, that's the video. Remember to sub if you enjoyed this content. No problems if not, I'll still be here plugging away. So until next time, I'll catch you in a bit.